Let's take a look at the problems then that are at the bottom of the handout so that we can do some practice. Again, it's nice to hear all the information, but it's best to do some practice. So we're going to find a vector perpendicular to this plane, part one, and then find a vector parallel to the plane. We've actually done this already, but I'm going to redo it because it's an important exercise. The first thing we learned when we want to do a vector perpendicular to the plane is to rewrite this plane. Put all the variables on one side and the constant on the other. So if I do that, I'm going to move these two, 3x and minus y over. So I have minus 3x plus y plus z equals 2. Let me make sure I have all my signs right. That changed the negative, that's a positive, and that's still positive. Okay. So there I've rewritten step one. And then step two is just peel off the coefficients of the variables. And that actually is my vector, my normal vector, perpendicular to the plane. It really is that easy, people. Don't make this harder than it is. Now, if I want to do a find a vector parallel to the plane, that's the idea of taking two points on the plane and then finding the vector between them. That's, that vector will be always parallel. It doesn't matter what direction it's in. As long as it's from two points on the plane, it will always be parallel to plane no matter where you move it. So I have to find two points that lie on the plane. So let's see. Let's try one and let's see. Oh, I'm trying to get, if I use this, okay, I like this one better. If I put a one here, that gives me negative three. And if I put a 4 here, that gives me 1. And then I just need one more here. So 1, 4, 1. And make sure you check it. So I'll check down here. If I put in 1 for x, I put in 4 for y, and I put in 1 for z, what do I get? I get minus 3 plus 5. And that will give me 2. Okay. Now my second point... Um, Let's put a zero in here because that's the oddball. So I put a zero in here and a one and a one. That'll give me two. So let's check it. Here, minus three times zero plus one plus one, and that gives me two. So those two points lie in the plane. Okay, make sure you check. And please, please, either use your calculator or check on a piece of paper. Don't just do it in your head and say, oh, yeah, that'll work. So then I need to find the vector between those two points. And that'll be 0 minus 1i plus 1 minus 4j plus 1 minus 1k. That gives me minus i minus 3j plus 0k. So there I have a vector perpendicular and I have a vector parallel to the exact same plane. Now since that was only three minutes, let's go on to the next problem that we have here. Problem number two. How is that as far as focus is concerned? So let me see if I can make sure it's focused okay. I don't know. That might be a little better. All right. So we want to give a unit vector in the same direction as this vector, then find a vector perpendicular to V. So a unit vector first. That's something from the previous section. Okay. So a unit vector requires me to have the magnitude of V. So that's going to be equal to each of those guys squared. So 2 squared plus 3 squared square root. That's going to give me square root of 4 plus 9 square root of 13. And the unit vector will always be the vector v divided by the square root of 13. So I'm going to take each of these components and divide it by square root of 13. So 2 over square root of 13 i plus 3 over square root of 13 j. So there's my vector of length 1. Then I want to find a vector perpendicular to v. Well, the only thing we really know about perpendicular vectors is that their dot product, and I'm using P for perpendicular, that their dot product has to be zero. Now know what the question says. Then find a vector.
perpendicular to V. There's lots of vectors that are going to be perpendicular to V. In fact, there's an infinite number of them. I just need to find one. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, okay, my vector V is 2, 3. And I want to dot it with a vector A, B with components, I component A, J component P, and I want that to be 0. So if I do the dot product here on the left, I get 2 times A plus 3 times B is supposed to equal 0. And I just need to find an A and a B where that works. I mean, you can't have A and B be the 0 vector. It can't be 0 because P, it can't be the 0 vector. Um, I just have to think of something that would work really nice. So if I, <laughs> I again, for ease, I'm going to let uh, A equal 1, and let's see what B turns out to be. So if I let A equal 1, I get 2 times 1 plus 3B equals 0. So 3B equals negative 2, so B has to be negative 2 thirds. So I just let A equal 1. I calculated, oh, sorry, uh, I let a equal 1, I calculated if a is 1, what does b have to be? And then those two things together should give me the vector p that I want. So p will be 1 comma negative 2 thirds. And if you want to see if it works, well, just do the dot product. You can do that yourself. So do 2 comma 3 dot 1 comma negative 2 thirds and see if it actually turns out to be 0. You should check yourself. Check now. I guarantee you it will work. All right, now number 3. Two vectors are parallel when, okay, so if I have a vector here and I have a vector parallel to it, I can have parallel going on that way or I can have parallel going on this way. Okay, either way. Um, and if you go online and look at this, they'll say their cross product is zero. But I tell you what, I don't want to mess with the cross product because technically it's not um, a scalar. So, you know, you, your cross product turns out to be the zero vector. That's kind of creepy. The cross product is zero because the angle between parallel vectors is zero or 180. And the sine of 0 is 0, and the sine of 180 or pi is also 0. So that's why this, these two have an angle of 180 in between them, and these two have a 0 degrees between them because of their direction. Okay, now uh, I would never, as a mathematician, ever talk about the cross product being 0 because it's not a scalar. Understand that. But I would say two vectors are parallel when they are scalar multiples of one another. So in other words, or for example, I have V equals lambda times W where lambda is a real number. Any real number that you want, not hashtag number. So for instance, if I have the vector, let's use the vector from the previous problem. If I have the vector 2, 3, and I want to find a vector parallel to it, I just have to multiply v times any real number I choose. So I'm going to let lambda equal pi, and then I'm going to say my vector parallel, w, is going to be pi times 2, 3. There's my scalar, or I can say 2 pi comma 3 pi. Those two are scalar, or are scalar multiples of one another, so they have to be parallel. Therefore, V and W not too bad. So remember, if you think that two vectors might be parallel, just make sure that you can factor out a scalar out of one of them, and then the resulting vectors are exactly the same.